Peace everyone, and thank you for coming back. Before going back to our story, let me tell you something. Last time we were talking about the place, where we came from. And we said, our soul committed whatever she did. Then Allah put our soul to death, in order to make us, alive again, over here on earth, and he called us, Ensan. Meaning the one, who forgot. Then Allah swore by the sun, by the moon, by the day, and by the night. By the sky, by the land, and by the soul, who formed it. Then, Allah inspired, to our soul, its wickedness, and righteousness. That means, whatever our soul did, up there, be it good, or bad, he put it back in our soul again, at the time when Jebrail blow our souls into our bodies, on this earth. But, then, Allah made us forget about everything, by calling us, N son. But why? If Allah did not want us to remember, then, why did he inspire our deeds, right back into our souls again? That is a big question, which will clear our minds about the creation. And at the same time, it contains an awesome hikmat. That means, we were in a place like earth. And we were among the angels, but they did not like us. Shayateen, were among us as well. Allah did not make shaitan, and angels to forget anything. That is why, they remember each one of us, from up there. Therefore, shaitan cannot touch the believers over here, as the Goron says. Also, animals, and all of those countless number of creatures were among us as well. That is why, Allah says, you were all used to be, one single community, but you disputed and only minority of his creatures, meaning, many human beings, and shaitan became transgressors. But, the only difference was that, we were our in total freedom, without any witnesses to record our acts. Just like 100 or so years ago, on earth, which we did not have any surveillance, nor NSA, nor satellites, nor any drones, nor internet, to watch us, 24-7 and all of these surveillances, are signs from Allah, which means, the secret of creation would be unveiled in our generation, so, we were doing anything we wanted to do, in total freedom. And it seemed like there were no punishments for our deeds. And we did not have any protectors in high society up there. That is why, when Allah was going to create us, he asked angels, to fall prostrate in front of Odam. That is why, coming to this world is a kind of punishment for us. We have to work for our provisions, we suffer from the heat of the sun, and cold weather. We fear and grieve over here. We would face disasters like wars, viruses, sicknesses, tornadoes, floods, fires, earthquakes, and so many other kinds of disasters and accidents. And Allah says, if you follow from my house rules, nothing happens to you. Otherwise, you would not be protected on earth, and on the day of judgment you will be sent to hell, or heaven. As the last respite. And we used to have bodies, with blood, like what we have over here. But, when we came to earth, although we have all of our destinies within us, but we do not remember them, until it unfolds over here. Just like unwinding the ball of yarn. Then, we would see our colorful destiny, unwind in front of our eyes, day by day. So pan Allah. That means, whatever we do, is exactly what we did before up there. But, this time we have witnesses, and recorders assigned to us. Plus, other creatures are our witnesses as well, and we are all being recorded. Therefore, we would not have any excuses on the judgment day. So, when we do not have any witnesses, it would be like your words, against my words. Which would never be stopped. That is why, when angels disagreed with Allah, at the time of creating human, Allah said to the angels, I know something, that you do not know. Because, he wanted to assign to us, recorders, and witnesses. Which, angels did not know anything about Allah's plan, but he told us, in the light of the Arabic Quran. Now, this time, Allah has sent us to a different environment, 
with different things around us. That is why angels did not know the names of things, which humans were going to deal with, because, they have not seen them up there. Like our fruits and trees will have different names from up there. But, when we go back to the heaven, we say, these fruits are like the ones have been given to us, before. Now pay attention here please. They are saying, the fruits in the heaven, are like the fruits, which we were given, on earth. Also they are saying, that these fruits are like the same fruits, when we were in that place, before coming to the earth. Because, in the heaven, our visions will be, as sharp, as a steel, and we will remember everything. Then, every once in a while, Allah will send his special servants in order to change our destiny on earth, to our benefits, only because, he is Al-Rahman, and Al-Rahim. One example of his blessings, are those, billions of humans, who die before the age of 41, and go to heaven. As the Arabic Quran says, one of those special creatures is the Ruh, or the angel Jebrail, who brings to us Hikmat. Or, when the angels drop on us, a new discovery. Or, our Mr. Destiny, who changes our destiny, by the will of Allah. Or, like when Allah assigned Musa, in order to confront Pharaoh, who was going to destroy the nation of Abraham. Or, when Allah assigned, Zolgaranain, who blocked, Yajuj, and Majuj from corrupting the earth. So, Allah inspired our destiny into our soul, at the time of birth. And we would not know about them, until they are unfold. Just think about the different stages in your life. Those were the actions that you took before coming here. So, when you go after something, or you want to do something, and it does not happen, then do not push it. Because, it is not in your destiny. Therefore, you want to play it, by the ear. That is why Allah says, you can not will, unless, Allah wills. Indeed Allah is the knower, the Hakim. That means Allah knows, what is in your destiny, and according to his hikmat, he will change your destiny through his special servants. And Allah gave us patient, so we could wait for tomorrow, in order to see another episode of our destiny to be unfold. That is why, Allah says, do not worry about the things, that happen to you. Because, it has already written. Among all the hikmat, which Allah has been blessing us with, this one is the biggest one, because, it does unveil, the secret of creation. Thank Allah for his awesome hikmat. That is how, Allah informs us, about where we came from, and why we are here. These hikmats, strengthen our hearts, which is one of the meaning of its root word, hakamah. Also it will make your life much easier. We read from Zura 38, when in the late afternoon, swift-footed, high-bred horses, were presented to Soliman. Then, he said, Indeed I have loved, the love of good things, more than, the remembrance of my Lord. Until she was hidden, behind the veil. And using, she, in this or yeah, refers to the sun. That means he got so upset, when he realized, that he was so busy with horses, until the sun went down. Then he said, bring them back to me, then he began to touch the legs and necks of those horses. But, why? He was just upset about what he did. Then, why he went back to those horses again. And in the next door yeah, we read. And indeed, we tested Soliman, and we threw a corpse, on his throne. Then he repented. He said, My Lord, forgive me, and grant me a kingdom, that does not befit, anyone after me. Indeed you are the giver. Therefore, he missed his middle prayer. But then, he found out that he could not do anything about it. So he performed his, after sunset prayer, and then he went back to those horses again. It seemed like, that when Soliman missed his prayer, he did not repent. And after his sunset prayer, he went after the horses again. That is why, he found, a dead body in his throne. Then he realized, that he could have been dead, just like that dead body. And would not have any chance to repent for his wrongdoing. Therefore, he repented to Allah, and asked for a great kingship. Ensure Allah, 
I am not mistaking in this matter, otherwise, I ask Allah for his forgiveness. And ensure Allah he will direct me to the right hikmat of these oyat. Again we read, we committed the mountains to serve Dawood, in glorifying Allah, as well as the birds. This is what we did. And we taught him, the skill, of making garments for you, so, it can protect you in war. Are you then thankful? No wonder. We read in Dawood's scripture, the Zabur, that he was performing his contact prayers, seven times a day. Mashor Allah. That is, what any follower of the nation of Ibrahim, would do, if they want Allah raise them to a praiseworthy position. That is from Zura 17. Named, for the sons will be transported by Allah, which means, for, the nation of Ibrahim. Here, Allah is saying, that he gave them both, hikmat and knowledge. Also, the knowledge of communicating with birds, and understanding and communicating with jinn beings. Also, understanding of the glorifications of mountains. Then, Allah committed the mountains, to serve Dawood. Now, mountains are made of rocks and stones. But, what can you do with rocks? Well, you can build buildings made of stones, and statues, and so many other things. But, who is going to carry the big and heavy stones? Well, they had, jinns, at their disposal, who could carry the mountains, and put it, wherever they ask them to put. And the birds, were at their disposal, as well. And as you know, birds migrate, so they know where they are going to. Also, Allah taught them, how to make shields, and armors, which were perfectly fitted their bodies, in order to protect them in wars. Therefore, we learned, the technology of armor, from the jinns as well. If you notice, the or yes says, we, soften the iron. And, we, refers to Allah, ordering jinns to soften, the iron for them. Remember, these are not the tales of, Harry Potter. These are the oyat of the scientifically proven scripture, supported by mathematics, the exact science. Make sure study the Arabic Goron, if you want to receive the hidden hikmat, in the Goron. Then, the jinns were at their disposal. They were the builders of any kinds of things, they wished them to build. They could carry the mountains to any place they wished. Jinns were diving for them. They softened the iron for doorwood, in order to make armor, which perfectly fitted their soldiers. We have learned some other knowledge from the jinns, which we read about them in Zura 2. They followed from what, Shayateen, were reciting in Suleiman's kingdom. And Suleiman, was not a disbeliever, but those Shayateen were disbelievers. They taught the people witchcraft and that which was sent down, through the two angels of Babel, Harut, and Marut. These two, did not teach anyone, unless they would tell them, we are here for sedition. Therefore, do not be a disbeliever. But they learn from those two, what causes separation between man and his companion. And they could not harm anyone, with it. Except by the permission from Allah. Therefore, they learned what harms them and not benefits them. And indeed, they knew, that whoever buys it, there would be no share in the hereafter for him. And surely evil is what they sold their souls for. If they only knew. For detailed info, please check tape number 12, part 5. If you are not familiar with it, please watch that tape. You would learn so much about Shaitan and his descendants, jinns. Allah was giving these father and son, some of his own powers on earth. That was an immense blessing from Allah, given to, his little bitty humans. No one in the history of earth, was given, that much power on earth, ever, as it was given to Dawood and Suleiman. So pan Allah. Remember, Muhammad was given so much power, so he could travel to the high heaven, with the help of angel Jebrail, the Ru and other angels, in order to meet with Allah, and receive the Arabic Quran. Also he was given, the tour around the high heaven. So pan Allah. Peace be upon Allah's messengers. Now, let us continue this exciting history of Dawood and Suleiman, on the next tape, Inshallah.
Until the next tape, peace.